you doing? Chris Horrocks with AfterburnerStoves.com. Today we're going to show you how to take that annoying rust off the top of your rocket stove. You're going to see this whenever you store it in a humid environment and you don't protect it with a light coating of oil. Uh, like any cast iron, you got to protect it or rust will show up. Now it's no big deal. It takes years and years and years for rust to do any damage. Look how long it takes for rust to eat through a car body in the areas of the country that don't use salt because that's unfair acceleration for the oxidation process. But just imagine uh, you have a thick cast iron. The rust takes years and years and years to damage it, but hey, why would you want to let that happen? So we're gonna show you how to take it off and protect it. Okay, let's take a look at a real nasty rust job here. This is one of the worst rusted tops I've seen uh, coming out of the box. Uh, it looks like the box was probably in the rain being loaded on or off of a truck in shipping or something and uh, That humidity that soaked into the cardboard uh, Had an effect on our stove tech rocket stove cast iron top here So we're gonna whip this out of the box and we're gonna go to town on it We just reach in grab it by the lip pull it on out Put the box aside. By the way, the box also contains our wood shelf and our uh, uh, pot skirt. Take the owner's manual out. Okay, and there's our rust. I want to get a good close image here for you. Hope that's showing up on camera all right. Uh, I'm out in the sun, so it's a little bit difficult to see the LCD screen on the camera. Um, but we've got a couple different products here. We've got just a regular, you know, shotgun oil. And then we've got the trusty WD-40, which uh, everybody and their uncle owns some. And uh, we've also got water, Brand X. Oh, you saw that logo? Well, whatever. We got some water, okay? Now here's the thing, we just want to show you that something as simple as water can actually take this rust off because we don't have any real damage being done yet. It's just a little oxidation happening right at the surface. So if you look here, let's uh, see if the camera's got a good angle here. So we'll do this patch here, little spots of rust, little tiny spots of rust, and they wipe right off with water and a paper towel, guys. This is just surface rust. So if you take it out of the box and you start freaking out, just take a nice deep breath and wipe it off, okay? This is not complicated. This is not damaged. The top is as good as new, okay? So what we have is a situation where we just need to dust that rust off because rust gathers rust and we don't wanna build up too much of a problem. Now, let's pretend it wasn't that easy. Let's pretend for a second that we've got some kind of deeper rust. So I can take a toothbrush and a little bit of WD-40, okay? And then let's take a look at a nice deep crevice here. We'll zoom in. Okay, you see all that nice rust? Well, we don't like it, do we? So. We're gonna go ahead and take a little WD-40 on a toothbrush and wipe it right off. Okay, let's rotate. Let's get this other one in view. Okay, you see that surface there? Let's just uh, brush that right on off. Okay, let's take a look at the edge here. We've got a little spot of rust right there on the edge. Okay, let's go ahead and wipe that off. Just rub it with our toothbrush covered in WD-40 and we are as good as new. Okay, now, what if I wanted to use some other kind of oil? Say I don't have any WD-40 on hand, that's just fine. We can get any kind of machine oil, any lightweight oil. OK, 
okay? And uh, we can put that on there. Just a drop or two is all you need. And again, just work the system. Just rub it over the surface. And the rust goes bye-bye lickety split. And this is how, of course, we pre-treat the tops before we ship them. If, uh, if you're purchasing a bag, because what we do is we take them out of the, the shipping box and we put them in a bag and we repackage them into a shipping carton. So you, you get a pre-treated uh, top that's already been de-rusted and oiled for you uh, when you order the bag. Now, we don't do that, obviously, to talk you into ordering a bag. Ordering a bag is your own personal choice. Go to the afterburnerstoves.com, check out what the bag's all about. If it's something for you, great. If it's not, no big deal. I'm just mentioning that we get a jump on it for you when you buy the bag. In fact, probably the labor that we're paying to ship units with bags, I probably shouldn't encourage you to buy the bag. But since the bag's such a great tool, I guess I'll just shut up. Okay guys, we took that top out of the box and it was completely infested with rust. And now, in less than two minutes, this thing is ready to ship out. It's in beautiful shape and uh, there's no rust whatsoever. By the way, if you're looking down here, you see this coloration, that's not rust uh, because rust can't exist on that kind of metal there. That's actually just clay dust and it wipes right off. See? Just dust from the ceramic inside. Okay, and then I missed a spot right over here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this up off camera. Alright guys. That is the completed top. Now I know some people will have questions about like how often the rust will appear, how hard it is to clean, uh, can rust affect the refractory metal liner, things like that. So let's, let's talk about that just for a few minutes here. Hang on. Okay, so you just saw us clean the rust off of the top of a rocket stove. We used a paper towel with water. We used a toothbrush with some WD-40 or other uh, oil. I find the WD-40 is best for cleaning. It's good for protecting. The, uh, the other kinds of oils, gun oil or light machine oil, is not as good for cleaning. Uh, but is a little bit better at protecting. It's whatever you got on hand, it'll work well. Um, but seriously, a paper towel or a scrub brush in water actually takes the rust off and then all you gotta do is protect it. In fact, one great method would be just to clean off the rust with a scrub brush, like a vegetable brush and some soapy, mild soapy water. Once it's de-rusted, oil it with palm oil, uh, which is otherwise known as organic shortening and uh, or you could use coconut oil or you could use olive oil uh, but I, I like the results on cast iron best with organic uh, shortening which is which is the palm oil and then you just uh, heat it up and season it like it's a cast iron pan because it, essentially it's cast iron cookware and you're good to go now how often will the rust show up in Arizona hardly ever unless you leave it in the rain the rare rain uh, Pacific Northwest more frequently if you don't keep it oiled uh, so just keep it oiled, uh, best with palm oil, but any cooking oil that you have will work. Uh, also what you can do is, um, is uh, keep some silica gel in the bag or in the five gallon bucket that you store your stove in to keep, keep the humidity down. If you can't get silica gel or you just want a cheap way to do it, use rice. Uh, you got any rice that's close to expiration, rice is very, very absorbent of moisture and if you put a handful of rice, what I like to do is put a handful, maybe half a cup of rice in a paper towel, fold the paper towel up, staple around the edges and then throw that in there. It doesn't make a mess because the rice is contained in the paper towel but it absorbs the moisture from the uh, environment. Okay, can that refractory metal liner ever rust up on you? Well, can it ever? Sure. <laughs> you remember multiple choice tests when you were a kid? You always knew that any, or true false tests when you were a kid, you always knew that anytime they were asking you a question about uh, uh, 
ever, never, or always that the answer, of course, was false, you know. But here's the thing. That refractory metal liner is made out of refractory metal. How do you get refractory metal? Well, what you do is you take iron and you add carbon to get steel. You take steel and you add chromium to get stainless steel. You take stainless steel, you add a few other elements, you get refractory steel. That's refractory steel, so it's a high grade of stainless steel and it's unlikely to rust. However, could it? Sure. Stainless steel guns rust all the time, but it just takes many, many, many more hours or exposure to salt or things like that. Uh, if that should happen, no big deal. You just go ahead and uh, uh, clean it off. What is, what is very nice about that refractory metal and what's unusual and that you need to know about is that it builds up an oxidation that is like a white oxidation due to those other additives that are in the refractory metal. So what happens, is, by the way, what's refractory mean? It means any material that can take heat and, and uh, keep its uh, uh, properties, its strength and its shape. So it's, it's a fancy word, but there's refractory tile, refractory metal, refractory clay. All of it just means it can take the heat and maintain its strength and shape. So it's a special kind of steel with stuff in it. That stuff in it will come to the surface and turn into a white oxidation. Instead of a brown or a red rust, it'll turn into a white oxidation. Now, when you see that, you wanna leave it alone. Don't scrape it off, don't clean it off, don't treat it, leave it alone, because that layer of oxidation on that refractory metal, that's the protection for that metal from the, the combustion process, uh, which makes it last many more years. You know that any steel in, in contact, any metal, any, any basically any metal, in contact with the combustion process over time thins and wears out, burns out. Well, what happens here with this refractory metal is that it buys you time because of its properties and that oxidation on that surface inside the chimney, that oxidation is gonna give you more protection. It's gonna prevent some problems over time. It's gonna keep that combustion further away from the metal. Will it eventually burn out? It can. If you're the type of person that's gonna cook three meals a day, seven days a week for years on end, could you burn out that refractory metal sleeve inside your chimney? The answer is yes, you could. Uh, it's unlikely for most of us users, but it can happen. If you happen to have that occur, no big deal, because behind that is the refractory clay that cannot burn out. It doesn't burn out and it's very, very thick. So even if it was to burn slowly over time, it would last many, many lifetimes before it thinned enough to lose its insulative properties, its strength, its shape, and become a problem for us. So really, what that refractory metal liner should be viewed, viewed as for us is an armor plate that gives us years and years of extra protection for our ceramic chimney, but it's backed up by a ceramic chimney that will last forever under the effects of the combustion process and it doesn't care. So what you have in a stove tech rocket stove is really a lifetime of cooking with free fuel. Now, so we've shown you how to take the rust off of the top. We've talked about some techniques that are gonna make it easy for you. It's like low hanging fruit. There's no real effort. You don't have to go buy special tools or products of any kind. It's whatever you have on hand in the way of brushes, rags, paper towels, bristles, mild soap, oils, it all works, okay? And then how to protect it, light coating of oil. The easiest oils to use are the ones in your kitchen already, the ones you have at home. And then uh, we've talked about that refractory sleeve and whether it can rust. And it, it doesn't really rust per se, but it oxidizes. It gets a, a white oxidation. And it's that white oxidation that protects it and gives you years of armor plating for your ceramic. And then when it's gone, if you should happen to be lucky enough to use your rocket stove <laughs> that much, then Behind that is that ceramic chimney that's gonna give you years of, of uh, that insulative property to make the, the rocket stove function properly for you. And so you're good to go. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel, comment down below, do reply videos, show us what you've done with your rocket stove. We love hearing from our uh, customers and would-be customers. And hey, we are here to serve you guys. We are here to make your outdoor cooking a better experience and to help you in your areas of preparedness and being better prepared to cook your food storage. If there's any way we could be of service in those areas or, or any way at all, give us a shout, drop us a line. Go out and cook something healthy for your family. Have a good day.